Hey, my name's Jason. Uh, you know, we're really excited to be here. I know our guys are still getting mic'd up over here. Uh, but help me welcome Thomas. This is Thomas. This is Jason Engstrom. And then Brittany K. Taylor is on her way out as well. They're joining me up here. Can we give them a big round of applause for helping out um, tonight? All right, so we're going to talk about improv. Uh, how many of you know what improv is? Improv acting. A bunch of hands are going up. You can put your hands down. Thanks for showing me that you understand what that is. Um, also, there are many different types of improv, right? There's short form improv, and if any of you are familiar with that popular game show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? That short form improv, they're quick, punchy games. Tonight what we're going to show you is more something called long form improv, a different sort of uh, form of improv. And this improv focuses on sustained scenes. And we believe um, that the skills that are you know, heightened through improv can really enrich the lives of individuals, uh, the relationships around us, enrich the lives of our teams, of our tribes. Uh, that was for you, Amy. It can really, you know, enrich uh, our community. And so without further ado, we're just going to do a quick scene for you guys. And what I need to get started, by the way, this is going to be a dialogue between you and I. I'm going to need suggestions. So the first thing I need, the suggestion is the place of your happiest memory. Just shout it out. Who has a suggestion? Beaver Lake. Beaver Lake. All right, the place of a happiest memory, Beaver Lake. <laughs> nice, you're picking it up. Yeah, I was a little scared. Pretty easy. Switch the sides. Oh. Yep, just three more hours of this and we'll be there. <sighs> wow. Nature. Hmm. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. You know, I like that shirt. Thanks. <laughs> you like that? Skin tight. Shows off my muscles. Yeah. Yeah, it's real nice. Hey, after three hours, these puppies are going to be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they can get any nicer. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to row a little faster if we want to get there before dark. <laughs> That's when the goblins come out. Uh, you, goblins? Yeah, the goblins. The water goblins. You, I told you about those. Well, you were drinking a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I guess I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> you, you, don't rem, you don't remember? You, you stood on the table and you yelled up to the clouds, I can take on any goblin. Well, I mean, of course I can take on a goblin, but uh, they're still scary, I guess. <sighs> My heart's going. <laughs> I hope none of them decide to come out early. <laughs> Just jump out of the water or something. <laughs> Was that? Did you have something to eat before you came? I don't know. I don't think that's my stomach. Did you grab the moon dust I told you to grab? Moon dust? How much was I drinking? You didn't grab the satchel of moon dust before you came out here? Uh, I don't have the moon dust, all right? L look, all I have is my pocket knife and some keys. We have them for the next three hours. <laughs> look, this is a weird date. All right, great. Okay, round of applause for these guys. Okay, so we were thinking we need to demonstrate some of the pillars of improv, right? These are some of the guidelines, some of the rules that we sort of, um, in the improv acting world, really try to adhere to. And these are also things that really um, transfer over into our every everyday lives. And I think if we can sort of, you know, catch hold of these things that we're about to talk about, it would really cause a mind shift. <laughs> Hashtag mind shift. Um, so... We're going to demonstrate now. The first one of those is listening. Any improv artist knows that it's important to listen, uh, you know, verbal 
words, nonverbals. You're trying to pick up as much as you can from the people that you're in the scene with. So I believe uh, Thomas and Brittany are going to demonstrate listening for us now. And what we need to get this scene started is a suggestion of a location that would fit on this stage. Shout it out if you got an idea. Trampoline. Trampoline, I heard. Okay. Listening on a trampoline. Oh, this is not good for your mother's bladder. <laughs> you got to lose that weight, Mom. You got to lose that weight. Come on. <laughs> Billy, Listen. you're grounded. <laughs> Get up here and jump here for me, please. Oh, man, this feels great. Billy, listen to your mother. Okay, good. Let's stop it right there. Okay, so do you think they were listening to each other, these two actors, during that? What did you pick on that they didn't listen to? Anybody pick up on anything specific? Obviously, she asked him to get up on the trampoline. He didn't. Uh, she was concerned about her bladder, and he had another kind of like a train of thought he was following. So now, guys, let's try it again. This time, let's really focus on the listening aspect of it, and we're still on a trampoline. Ready? Sure. Let's do it. Take it away. I'm a mermaid. I'm a mermaid. Billy, look at me. Look at me. I'm a mermaid. Oh, I see you, Mom. Do I look like a mermaid? I see you. You look so beautiful, Mom. Thank you. Dance. Thank you. Dance for me. I'm going to join you. I'm going to join you, Please Mom. Please do. Oh, oh, my goodness. This is so much fun, Mom. Oh, I'm so glad I'm here that you're my son. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Give him a round of applause. Yes. We're actors, so we do like that, uh, that applause. Man, that's what we're up here for. Um, okay, so next, next we're going to demonstrate another very important part of improv, and that is the concept of yes and. All right, It's the idea that what your scene partner says you were going to agree with, and then you're going to add to that in some way. And adding to is really important. It helps to move our narrative along. Uh, otherwise, we just have people agreeing with each other all day long, and there's not really anything you know that <laughs> mind blowing, mind shifting, about simply just agreeing with each other. So I believe Jason and Brittany are going to demonstrate yes and, and for that we need to get a suggestion of a job or an occupation that they might have. What, a what collector? Tax collector. <laughs> Tax collector. Hello? Yes. Mrs. Brittany K. Taylor? That's me? Yes. You're late on your taxes, and I've come to collect them. You're right. And I see you. <laughs> yes. I need you to give me the tax money now. I understand that's what you need from me. <laughs> you should get the tax money. I should have done my taxes better. Okay, good. Let's stop it right there. So these two were obviously agreeing with each other, but the scene wasn't going to go anywhere. It felt like they were going to stay at the door there and talk about what she needed to do for the next few minutes. So we're going to take that again, and this time really add to. Whatever line is said, we're going to try to add and build that reality, right? Okay, we're still, <laughs> you're still a tax collector, I guess. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> these taxes are awesome. Oh my gosh, I totally agree. But here's the thing, if we don't do them, what if Zacchaeus comes to our house? I hear they come straight to your house if you don't do your taxes. But I'm having such a good Wouldn't that time be so much, much it. more fun? We could totally mess with him. Let's do it. Let's totally mess Wait, with Zacchaeus. What if I filled out half the form and we hid in the bushes? And when they came by, I just threw half the money at them. That would be perfect. Oh my gosh. Or what we could do is we could wait till April 15th and then do exactly what you just said because it's perfect. It's a brilliant idea. <laughs> wait. Oh, what if we got fined? Bum, bum. Okay, good. So, uh, so yeah, great. Round of applause for them. That was a good job of yes-anding. 
We're going to focus now on specificity. It's really important to be specific when you're doing improv, being specific with um, the words that you say, uh, the locations that you're talking about, being specific with your movements. If you're miming anything, it's, it's really important. So Jason and Thomas are going to demonstrate for us uh, specificity. And I need to get a suggestion of a sport, any sport. <laughs> ice skating. I heard ice skating, <laughs> except for I'm not going to talk to you. Oh, this feels pretty all right. Look out for that thing over there. You go. Gonna... Oh, I'm going to avoid that thing. <sighs> oh, man, this is yeah. so much fun hanging out with that guy that we met. Yeah, he was awesome. I love how he did that thing. Man, that was really cool. Uh, you, sh you probably really appreciate that he did that for you. Man, that felt maybe good, maybe not good. <laughs> all right, so we'll stop it right there. <laughs> Obviously, they were demonstrating a lack of specificity. Uh, we were just rehearsing outside, we were talking about, and we were like, okay, so, uh, what, you know, just being really nonspecific, words like thing and stuff and all of that. Um, now we want to demonstrate kind of exactly what it would be if we were being really specific, almost overly specific guys with our, <laughs> with our ice skating uh, techniques. Take it away. What's this triple axel? <laughs> oh, that's really nice. I wish I brought my jacket. I told you to, Bill. You're a great brother. You said it was going to be warm outside. Well, it's warm for me, you know. Plus, I've got my new Rockets 3000 on. Yeah, well, if I had worn a parka because it's cold in here, I would have known. Yes. This parka that I got from Burlington Coat Factory is great. It was only $50. Okay, good. All right. So we get it. So they're being very specific about their, uh, what they're doing. So now we're going to put all of that together. And for the rest of our time, we're just going to spend um, sort of creating another moment of improv theater for you. We also want to bring up the concept of gifts. Uh, the idea that when we're improv up here, there are mis no mistakes. There are only gifts. So even if we flub up a person's name or um, sort of, you know, say what could be the wrong thing in the narrative of our story, we as improv artists are going to take that and use it. And it's presented as a gift. It's like the improver's way of saying, you know, when... The world gives you lemons, make lemonade. Um, so look out for all of those things. We're, we're listening, we're yes anding, we're being really specific, and we're offering each other uh, gifts. So to get this one started, I need a suggestion of a gift that you've received that maybe you weren't too thrilled about. <laughs> Socks. Surprise! Oh, oh my gosh, tube socks. Oh, meow, meow, meow. I already drew the faces on them. Oh, Look at that, look at that. I think I wanted a pony. <laughs> <laughs> meow, 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 meow. I knew you didn't meow, want a pony. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah. I'm your dad. Really? And I love you. Oh, that's why I gave you these socks. I know, oh. you, you, kept, you kept talking about how your feet were so cold all the time, and I was like, I'm going to get her some socks. <laughs> You're the... Best dad. Yeah. Thank you I know you got all so those tests coming good. up, and so I, you know, you like to hang out. So I, you, I know you like socks. <laughs> hey, dad. You're the coolest dad. I, uh, I didn't see my gift. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you didn't see your gift? You know what? Why don't you go out to the driveway? Okay. Go out to the driveway. See, there's something out there. <laughs> oh my! What could it be? I don't know. Wait, I bought it, because I'm the dad. <laughs> it's, it's really nice. I think he's going to like it. It's a motorcycle. Don't tell him. Wait, let's, let's see what he... He's almost there. <laughs> wow, Dad, this is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Man, I knew he'd like that motorcycle. <laughs> Man, that cost a fortune. I bet he's really enjoying that motorcycle. Yeah, hey, what are you doing I here? You gotta get studying, right? More. Shouldn't you be studying? Jessica? I hate you so much. <laughs> I can tell. Hey. 
Welcome. Thanks. Is this your first time here? Yeah, I heard we were just going to be breathing. Breathing. All right. First, let me, let me make sure the chakra of your hair is in alignment. Thanks. Okay. I got into this. I had to stop this fight at school today. That's rough. That's rough. I know. Okay. I'm just going to hold you. Uh, my name is Bill, by the way. Hi, Bill. Okay. Yeah. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to breathe, and when you breathe in, I want you to think... <laughs> and when you breathe out, I want you to think... <laughs> Okay, you ready? <laughs> That's good. Thank you. I, have you. What have you noticed? Hey, those are nice socks. I got them down at uh, Burlington Coat Factory. Have you ever... <laughs> Dad said I could ride the motorcycle. Too bad. It's mine. He said we could share. Y'all could share because I love you equally and I also wanted to uh, give you a really good dad. gift. That's the puppet that you call dad. No, I'm not. I'll tell you what. Your, your puppet can ride the motorcycle what? with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's not my dad. Don't tell dad I brought this in the living room. <laughs> That'll show him, hmm? Hey. Hey, Jason. Did I, did I hear Jason down here? Was that? Oh, hey. I was just studying for my test. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, Jessica. Just, just, just filling my brain with knowledge. I wasn't sure. being jealous. Right, right, of course not. No. Hey, I, I got you some uh, orthopedic shoes. I, I was... <laughs> I was going to surprise him with you, but... Will they make me taller? Yeah, they will. Oh my gosh, these are almost as good as heels. I hope Amy comes up to me and tells me that she likes my shoes. <laughs> All right, good. Let's stop it right there. Round of applause for these guys. Thank you. Thank you.